a friend of mine about an hour ago um, sent me an article saying researchers discover a caterpillar that eats plastic. And they have 50 different species. One's called a wax worm, wax okay. moth. Have you heard this, Denny? Anything about these caterpillars used by scientists to how they uh, digest uh, plastic? I have not heard about the caterpillars yet. I'm going to have to look that one up. But I did hear news um, before about a bacteria that was discovered that we thought could digest plastics as well. And there, of course, all of a sudden became all these great ideas of we're going to put this bacteria all over the ocean and it's going to eat up all the plastic and everything is going to be fine. Um, but, and I cannot speak to the caterpillars because I don't know anything about them. But the thing that my kind of gut reaction to any solution like that is that we have to be really careful about the other consequences that we might not foresee happening. So if we decide that these caterpillars are going to eat up all of our plastics, what happens to them? Who are their predators and are they okay? Are they affected by all the plastic chemicals? Where does all their waste go and what do they eat besides plastic? So I think there's always a chain reaction when you try to have the solution to something that's going on in nature. And I'm always just a little hesitant until we, we figure out the whole life cycle of that caterpillar and what's going on there before we employ them to clean up all of our stuff for us. Hi, uh, thank you very much for that very interesting talk. I learned a lot and uh, also you reminded me of things which I know, but I'm guilty of ignoring. I'm certainly guilty of the uh, wish cycling that you mentioned. So uh, well, I had a question related to that. So you said that most of the plastic of the oceans comes from microfibers. Is that true only in the Northeast and the Gulf of Maine? Or do you know if that's true worldwide? Yeah, so that's an interesting question. It's true worldwide by Quanzi. The most um, abundant type of microplastic in the ocean is microfibers. But if you're looking for the most abundant type of marine debris in the ocean by weight, it's of course going to be things like derelict fishing gear and abandoned vessels and other things like that. So I'm glad you clarified that. But the, the most abundant type of microplastic in the ocean is coming from fibers and synthetic textiles. And that's true worldwide? Is that true about all the world's oceans? It is. I, I believe it is, yeah. And also about the plastic debris that you're finding in the Northeast, how much of it is locally generated? How much of it comes from, how much of it is spread around the world? Is that, yeah. That's a really good question that I wouldn't be able to answer unless I could source all of the debris we find back to its original location. I will say that for New England, what we typically see on beaches, at least in my experience, is about 50% fishing gear related things like the bands that they put around the lobster claws or the trap tags or the escape panels. Um, so it's about 50% fishing related debris and about 50% consumer debris like your Dunkin' Donuts straws, plastic coffee cups, um, cigarette butts, other things like that. And I think that does vary region by region. Um, there is a really interesting fate and transport study, if you want to check it out, from New England. Um, I don't know if you've heard of hook set discs, but there is a water sanitization plant in hooks at New Hampshire, and they use these very specific um, small plastic discs. They're probably two inch diameter, and they're clear plastic with mesh inside. And a couple years ago, there was a spill of them. Um, they're used to clean the water they're used in some sort of filtration system of the water. I don't know the exact science behind it. But a couple of years ago, the plant had a spill and it spilled a couple million of those discs from that exact location. And Blue Ocean Society, which is a nonprofit in New Hampshire, is actually tracking them. So you can go on their website, they have a map. And if you find a hooksit disc on the beach, you can snap a picture of it and get your GPS coordinates and log it in their database. And they have been found in Florida, they've been found in England, they've been found all over the world. And while that was a terrible marine debris tragedy, it was a really great learning opportunity because it's one of the only um, instances or events where we know the exact date, time, and location that that specific debris entered the marine ecosystem and can kind of track it back to its source. Um, so it's a really good study in fade and transport, and you can see all the pictures of the hooks of discs. And I have never done a beach cleanup anywhere in New England where I have not found one. So they are still out there. 
Demi, thank you so much for joining us tonight. You, your, your work is uh, very important and we appreciate it. And uh, you did an awesome job. So uh, thanks for making time on, on an evening for us. My pleasure. And thank you all of you for listening and for your questions. And like I said, please feel free to reach out anytime. Thanks for watching. For more information, visit our website at www.futurefrogman.org.